So, I have been sent this video. It's a little old now. It's two weeks old at this point. By a YouTuber named Poncho. Who, ironically, I'm subscribed to. Apparently, this guy makes or made content at some point since 2015. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that unsub button, though. Um, apparently, this guy made or makes content at some point from 2015 to now that was actually good. Because I decided to drop him a sub. I'm scrolling down, and it looks like everything he's made in the last two months is complete trash. Okay, now when you get, like, to four months ago, the videos are a bit more, like, just kind of broad, like, YouTube commentary shit. Yeah, like, he, he, he dunked on Andrew Tate a bit. Yeah, so it seems like this guy just kind of follows the cultural groove of things. Like, this guy is the biggest bandwagoner that I've ever seen. If you go to this guy's YouTube thumbnails and you look at this guy's channel... It is the most, like, following what is the big thing in the YouTube commentary community channel I've ever seen. Like, every thumbnail, every title is, like, massive clickbait. A lot of Nick Akato Avocado videos. Yeah, he made the worst vegan ever video, super clickbaity. Wouldn't get off my YouTube recommended. A lot of v that vegan teacher content. Yeah, so this guy blew up a while ago due to much different content than what he made here. Um, but yeah, this guy made a video two weeks ago called You're Transphobic. Apparently he got a comment with like two likes or something that accused him of being transphobic. I don't even know what for. I don't even know if he's actually transphobic. For all I know, the comment itself is actually not founded in reality and has actually pushed him into actually being transphobic. So we're just gonna have to find out. It's not a very long video, but people have been asking me to watch this, so... Let's go ahead and take a look. You're transphobic. Today we'll be focusing on the transphobia allegations, man. I'm under attack. A lot of people have been saying, oh, you're transphobic. Good for you, Pancho. El transphobe. <sighs> when somebody says the word transphobe or transphobic, you usually think of somebody hating trans people. And that's just stupid because I don't see any reason why I would need to hate on somebody for being delusional. I've never once said... I, they've been doing this for, like, every type of, like, bigotry. It, they think it's, like, a very clever gotcha, right? Like, back in the day when, like, whether or not gay people should be allowed to exist was, like, the talking point and the, like, cultural thing like it is uh, with trans people now. It was like, ah, you call me homophobic? You'd think, like, you'd call someone homophobic if they hate gay people. But I don't hate gay people. I just think they're degenerate freaks who've lost their way. It's like, holy shit, dude, you've destroyed the left, man. Wow, you're, you're not homophobic because you think they're degenerate freaks. You don't hate them, you just think they're degenerate freaks. Ah, uh, yes, you're not transphobic, you just think trans people are, de are, are just delusional. Ah, you, you, you've destroyed the left's argument. No, in reality, transphobia does not simply describe people who are A, you get, you get one of these two arguments, sometimes both. A, people who are scared of trans people, Okay. Blank phobia does not exclusively refer to fear. Even arachnophobia does not exclusively refer to fear. Phobia refers to a fear or a version to. This includes disgust. If you are disgusted by spiders, you are arachnophobic. In the same way that if you are petrified and terrified by spiders, you are arachnophobic. The same applies to the fear or disgust that you might feel for somebody simply for being different from you. And that is the case here, of course. Um, now, in the case of trans people, transgender people are scientifically proven to be not delusional. We, we, I, I guess I could play the, uh, the video again. Here's the reason why trans people are not uh, delusional. The reason why trans people aren't delusional is because, well... Here you go. I do have to mute this video, though, because it's going to play copyrighted music. This is the body of scientific data that, um, like, pertains to the idea of trans people and things related to it, like gender and sex and what have you, and human psychology, you know, pertaining to it. All of scientific consensus backs up the validity of trans people's identities. The idea that trans people are delusional is itself delusional. Um, it is antithetical 
to the scientific consensus. It is objectively not true. And it is an opinion that is simply false. It is not one that is backed up by science. And if you think that there's some excuse for why it is okay to hold an opinion that science does not agree with um, on this issue, then you are somebody who does not care about reality and you are emotionally attached to your positions and uh, nothing I can say is going to change your mind. You're like a flat earther or a climate change denier. It's just how it is. Or an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> Used to be that anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, climate change deniers, and, um, and the like were all on the same level. But now a few of those groups have a lot more credibility because of conservatism these days than they ought to. I'm starting to even see a lot more flat earth. Have you guys started to see flat earth is getting more popular? The, prolif the pl proliferation of the anti-vax conspiracy theory stuff among the right naturally only leads to more conspiracy theories. For many, it's the JQ, but from there it spirals. I've been seeing a lot more flat earther conservatives. I'm really excited to see. Because years ago, anti-vax and flat earth were on the exact same level. And it was mostly conservatives that, that believed in both, of course, but they were on the same level of, like, everybody saw them as insane. Hell, like, people used the idea that Trump might be anti-vax as an argument against the idea of uh, electing him effectively in debates back in the day. Like, there was a clip of Trump where he said, Oh, they put so many, so many vaccines in these tiny little babies. And, like, everybody gave him shit for that. He was getting dunked on by everybody for the, like, the possibility that he might be anti-vax. Now look at the Republican Party. If you think they won't do that with flat earth, if you don't think there won't be a significant amount of Republican red voters in this country voting Republican, holding the belief that the earth is straight up flat within the next five to ten years, if you don't think that's possible, you got another thing coming. And the fact that I'm predicting it Whew. What is Zan talking about? Big brain shit. Big brain shit. It's just going over your head, okay? That on this channel that I hate somebody for being trans or they should die or anything hateful. I've always just disagreed with their decision and... Yeah, you see, I, I don't hate gay people. I just disagree with their lifestyle, you know? They shouldn't be allowed to be gay, you know? Th this is delusional. The idea that you can separate what someone is from who they are, um, like from them. Like, being gay or being trans is who somebody is, in the same way that being straight or being cis is who you are. This is the kind of guy that gets triggered when he sees, like, a woman on Twitter tweet, All guys just want the same thing. This guy gets triggered at that generalization and probably thinks it's sexist. And yet, here he's saying that trans people, he disagrees with their lifestyle quote unquote, he disagrees with their decision, uh, which is who they are, like that decision he's referring to, like he's wording it very vaguely. They refuse to word it like exactly what it is, because in reality, what they're doing is denying the personhood of trans people. They have to claim and, and like over exaggerate the definition of transphobia because they don't want to be transphobic. They knew they know transphobia looks bad. They have to make it seem like it's some opinion-based, you know, irrelevant, just like, oh, why are they going after me for this, you know, irrelevant opinion that doesn't affect them? But they're a large public figure who's advocating for the idea that their identity is not valid. And I guess they take disagreeing with the decision as me saying I hate them. Believe that, I guess. If I have anybody that's watching this video that's that low IQ, I wouldn't mind if you believed that because I don't want any low IQ people in my audience. If we're on the isn't it wild how all these guys kind of embody the same vibe as, like, Sneeko and Aiden Ross and whatnot? Like, they all have the same level of, like, really dumbed-down energy. And the fact that he's, like, bringing up IQ and, and, like, having a low IQ audience and not wanting a low IQ audience right off the bat tells you this guy is, like, self-conscious about it. Like, this guy seems like he's self-conscious about his intelligence, which he should be, because just based on the way he talks, I can tell he's fucking dumb. He's projecting hard, yeah. The topic of hating groups of people, I'd say the only group of people I really hate are pedophiles. I don't care if they die. I Where is this coming from? What are, we, what are we talking about? Are we gonna get... Okay, so I assume 
So I assume because he's just like pulling pedophiles as a topic out of nowhere that he's about to get into the idea that trans people are groomers. And I'm also going to start placing my bets in my private Discord server where um, we literally have what's called a, um, a pedo pool. It's, not, it's like a death pool, but instead it's where we bet on which big YouTuber is going to get exposed as a pedophile next. And I'm going to put some money down on Poncho. Because uh, this is coming out of nowhere and it's a little sussy. It's a little bit sussy. That was a joke, by the way. We, we, there's no, there is no, like, YouTuber death pool for who's going to get exposed as a pedophile next. I don't care if they get... That would be a really good idea, though, and would be a fantastic, like, uh, underground gambling, like, community to exist. I'm sure it does somewhere, but I'm not in it. I'm sorry. Get burned alive. Like. You know, some people would say, ah, oh, Poncho, this is a PR-ass response. Why don't you just come out and say you hate trans people if you don't agree with any of the things they do with transitioning or their decision? Because that's just stupid. That's just stupid. There's nothing you gain from hating people. You don't gain. I, I, I don't really know how you're supposed to respond to the idea that transgender people existing is it a like so here's the actual reality of it okay trans people for the most part suffer from something called gender dysphoria this exists it has been proven to exist google it trust me a lot of scientific and medical articles are going to come up all right gender dysphoria is not delusion conservatives have desperately tried to take the fact that trans identity is inherently complicated and have tried to weaponize that compare being trans to every other group of marginalized people prior to um like what we're at now right when it comes to people of different races and accepting them and allowing them to have rights it's literally just as simple as they were born different and you shouldn't hate them because they were born looking different than you. Literally as simple as that. Not very hard to argue. A very simple philosophical argument to sell people on, relatively speaking. Not that it was easy back then, but I think in hindsight, a lot of us would look, on, like, look at that as a very easy argument to make compared to like, why trans people are valid, right? And then you've got gay people, right? Gay people, they just... The whole point of being gay is that you are just attracted to people who are the same sex as you, or the same gender as you, right? You just want to have a relationship and be able to live your life. Like, it is literally as simple as that. Hell, plenty of people can very effectively be gay in the closet, and so it's, like, a little bit less of a thing where uh, uh, a lot of people even have to argue about it, right? But then you've got trans people. Trans people are a group of people who literally have a mental condition that, to simplify it, in scientific terms, means that they are, in the case of a trans woman, a woman in the body of a man. And they are severely, severely suffering due to that fact. If, you don't, if you've never thought about it much, then you may not realize this, but like being in the wrong body would actually really fuck with you mentally and send you into a very bad depressive spiral. Something that a lot of trans people deal with. It is this that a lot of conservatives try to weaponize as a way of trying to take away agency from trans people's decisions. The idea that this lessened state of mental health somehow means that trans people are not capable of knowing what is best from, for them or making the best decision. That this is delusion. In reality, in the real world, every scientific organization, every medical organization, and all of their research and data and all of their meta-analyses all come to the same conclusion that the only treatment for this gender dysphoria, the only treatment for this extremely damaged state of mental health, is to transition. It is to take hormones. It is to socially transition, that is to say, wear different clothing, change your name, change your pronouns, etc., etc., voice training. Um, and it is to be validated in that identity. We know that the validation, which is the core thing that this guy refuses to offer, is so important and actually does help trans people due to a number of studies that have shown, uh, and one of my favorite ones demonstrates that, you know that 40% uh, that 
stat that uh, chuds like to throw around about trans people, like, ah, yeah, 40%, 41% yourself, or whatever. That 41% statistic of suicidal ideation among trans people drops down to less than two, or less than a percent, sorry, simply with the support of either a family member or a friend who validates their identity. More so if it's a family member. The existence of a of a identity validating family member reduces that chance of suicidal ideation and the rate of depression by in the study that I read, I think it was 72%, but it might have been 71. I'm not overshooting it by much. It was in the low 70s in the terms of percentage, but that is insanely high. You know, that's an insane amount. Um, we know that validation objectively leads to a positive increase in the mental health of trans people. That 40% or 41% stat Chuds try to throw around as an argument for why trans people are not capable of knowing what is best for them is in fact dissolved away when trans people are validated, when they're allowed to transition. But they know that. They obviously know that. Let's be real. They obviously know that. They want trans people dead. Denying trans people what trans people know is best for them and, they are tr and what they are trying to get access to means more dead trans people. And that is what they are trying to achieve. He doesn't have to go on a video and admit he hates trans people to be a transphobe. He can simply contribute to an overall cultural push to take away what has been scientifically proven to allow trans people to live. And that will result in the objective outcome of more dead trans people. And I think that's way more valuable to a transphobe than being able to admit he is a transphobe on video. So yeah, that's basically the reality of what's happening here. In anything. I mean, you, on the internet, I'd argue you can actually gain a lot by hating people on the internet or hating trans people or hating whatever group of people on the internet. Yeah, you're doing it right now. Because there's a market for that. But I want to be above that. I don't want to just lead with hate. And, you know... Yeah, you're kind of giving away the game right now that what you're trying to do is have your cake and eat it too. Like, you want to play into the transphobic audience by saying you disagree with their lifestyle and doing a bunch of dog whistles for why trans people are not valid and not good. But you also don't want to, uh, like, you don't want to, uh, you know, commit yourself to that position hard enough that uh, people who do not hate trans people will be like, what the fuck? Yo, Poncho, cringe, bro. You know, at the end of the day, as I said, I don't agree with it, but that doesn't mean I'm hating. I think people who are trans suffer from a mental illness, and that's gender dysphoria. We learned about... Well, well it's not... It's objectively not a mental illness. Uh, you've already... You've already demonstrated you don't really know much about it. It's actually a mental condition, and uh, the cure for that mental condition is what you've said is a lifestyle you disagree with. That mental condition is alleviated by transitioning and being validated. I, I think it's important to clarify, by the way, for the sake of understanding the medical terminology. Gender dysphoria is not a mental illness. Gender dysphoria is a mental condition that breeds mental illnesses. Depression, uh, PTSD, which is not really caused by being trans, but usually comes along with it because of the things that can happen to trans people for being trans. Um, uh, 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 obviously, like, suicidality. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that kind of branch off from it. I'm not really thinking of a lot of things off the top of my head right now, but I'm sure trans people in chat can list them. Those are mental illnesses, and those are symptoms of gender dysphoria, which is a mental condition, or BPD, yeah, um, which is a mental condition... That is fixed by being able to transition and being validated as that as that gender. So if you want to attack the actual mental illness that you're thinking about, then you want to attack it at the root. And the way you attack it at the root is by curing the mental condition of gender dysphoria by validating trans people and giving them access to their uh, ability to transition. But that years ago, and, and this it got is backed changed up by medical from a mental science. illness to a... Uh, what do they call it? A term now. It's just a term. No, no, it's not a term. It's a mental condition. Um, so he's just indicating that he barely knows what he's talking about. 
Uh, yes, medical science evolves over time. They didn't change. So he's already demonstrating here that he knows that the scientific consensus backs up trans people. And every transphobe who, like, has a platform and dedicates themselves to transphobia generally knows this. And they have to find a way. Hey, tipster. They have to have a they have to find a way to manipulate the narrative into how they are still a rational facts based actor despite the fact that all the facts-based rational science people disagree with their opinion. They have to dance around that. They have to find a way to still come off as the big brain rational person, despite the fact that all the big brain medical people think they're an idiot. A term for a boy who's confused and thinks he's actually a girl or a girl who's confused. You know, that's exactly what they said about gay people. That that's literal. That is literally exactly what they said about gay people. They still ca they still say it about gay people, but not as much because homophobia is not as generally accepted in society anymore. Um, yeah, the, the idea like ah oh, yes, you're just confused. That is literally what they said about gay people. That that is just it's the same thing over and over again. We really do. I I need to get Cherry to skim over my vods from 2019. Where I, where I had woke scolds telling me that I talk too much about trans stuff for a cis man. And it's me responding time and time again with, just watch. Just watch. Trans rights is going to be the social, like, issue of this generation. It is going to be the Gen Z social issue. issue like gay rights was for the last generation. Just fucking watch the same type of people get mad about groups of people who are different from them existing they don't want them to exist and they need to create a rhetorical strategy for explaining why their position is ra like not a radical and uh not facts-based position they need to find a way to explain that in a way that does not let the cat out of the bag. They have to use dog whistles. They have to obfuscate their real position. They have to say things like they just disagree with the lifestyle, yada yada yada. Hate the sin, not the sinner. That kind of thing. She doesn't actually think she's a boy. And just because you have some sort of mental disorder doesn't mean I can't treat you like a human. I'll have a conversation with you if you're cool. But if we get to talking, let's say we're talking about random people. And then the trans person goes, don't misgender them. That's not okay. Bro, I'd stand up and leave. I'd get the fuck out of there because I'm not going to have somebody order me to be confused about reality. <laughs> He's actually putting into words a point that I've made about conservative rhetoric around trans people um, quite well. Uh, now, obviously, he's not going to back anything up he has to say here with any type of studies or facts or anything here. He's just going to say, my, fa my, my opinions agree with reality, despite the fact that he just acknowledged the fact that they, by that he means the entire scientific consensus, disagrees with him. Um, the reality of it is, he is not going to interact with any trans people in a scenario like that, okay? Like, that's not going to happen. Like, that scenario is not going to occur. He is underplaying how transphobic he is, um, and he knows what he's doing. I think that a lot of people who are uh, like transphobic public figures at this point probably watch a lot of Matt Walsh. They probably watch a lot of Ben Shapiro. They probably watch a lot of Steven Crowder. And there's no doubt they picked up on the fact they need a dog whistle. They need to use certain rhetorical strategies. They need to use certain lines that are popular with sort of smoothing people over for your transphobic beliefs who may not be transphobic. And that's what he's doing right now. I have no doubt this guy watches Matt Walsh and he's probably employing some of Matt Walsh's strategies just very badly because he's an idiot. That's fucking retarded. <laughs> Duh, I'm not buying it, dog. Like, you can't fool me. I'm not brainwashed like you. I'm not with the mental gymnastics shit. I'm sorry. I mean, when I was a kid, I grew up and there is a boy and a girl. I firmly believe most people believe this, but they're too- Dude, th this guy- this guy's arguments are like the most brain-dead, 
logic that you can possibly have to justify your positions. And it's the kind of thing that's either going to kill this guy's channel. This guy does not make political content, so he's either going to die off, or he's going to have to, like, explain why these positions were bad and stupid and apologize it for it in a few years. That's what I really like about this age of, uh, of the internet. How many of, like, the OG edgelord content creators who are basically the these guys of 2016 nowadays are apologizing and explaining why their positions back then are wrong? There is going to be a wave of content creators that we know today as, like, dumbfuck transphobic chud types that in a few years are going to have complete turnarounds and are going to be explaining, uh, apologizing and explaining why their old positions, what they said was wrong. It's gonna happen. It's going to happen or we're never going to hear about them again because their channel's going to fucking die. Not Leafy, that's for sure. Leafy's, Leafy's a special case, to be fair, but also Leafy is not doing well. Leafy gets like 7,000 views on his Rumble streams, okay? Like, views, not viewers. Views on the VOD. Like, yeah. Leafy's public image is dead. Too nice to tell these people the truth. And I'm not here to spread hate, and I'm not here to radicalize anybody. I don't want any of you guys being transphobic, because it doesn't solve anything. One thing I've noticed that they get twisted. Good one, man. You're really, you're covering your bases, dude. You're, you're making sure nobody, nobody, your arguments are unassailable. It is very clear that nobody can call you transphobic. Is they'll listen to somebody make an edgy joke about trans people, and then they'll say that that person's a transphobe, even though they're just making jokes. Re I like how he gets to the, ah, yes, they're just mad about edgy jokes point after three minutes of explaining why he thinks trans people aren't valid. Dude, if you wanted to do the it was just edgy jokes defense, you have to just do the it was just edgy jokes defense and then leave it at that. You can't, you, you can't do any indication of the idea that you don't think trans people are valid because not thinking trans people are valid is transphobia definitionally, okay? Um, so you are a transphobe by definition. You just own it you know, or, or you know you are and you're just not owning it because you're scared, um, which is probably the case. But, like, you can't do the edgy joke excuse after explaining that you actually believe in the transphobia that the edgy joke would be about. That, that's not how it works. You have to do one or the other, either double down on it, which is what you started with, or use the it was just a joke defense. You can't do both. Regardless of them being edgy or not. And they'll paint him as like a transphobe, a hateful person. When it's like, bro, that's not the case. Even if it's a hateful joke, that doesn't mean they hate you guys. Like, I can make a hateful joke towards my homie, and it'll piss him off for like a second. But that doesn't mean I hate him. I'm just giving him okay. shit. Th these people are so soft nowadays. They can't even process a joke. People don't realize what... Ah, uh, yes. The arguments he was making about why trans people aren't valid for the first half of the video were just a joke now, I guess. It will be the meme. Is that going to be his defense? I don't know. The jokes are anymore. They're like, oh no, there's an underlying intent with that. He's hitting all of the bases, though. He's hitting all the bases of, like, your low IQ, like, dude bro, smooth brain, like, just got into right-wing politics and is trying to appeal to the right talking points. He's doing very good jo a good job at it. He's, like, hitting all the bases. It's like, that's why he's joking and not taking that underlying intent. That's why he's making the fucking joke. <laughs> like, and, and the one that I can think of off the top of my head is dudes be 14, 15, and already converting to a woman. Like, damn, you at least try to get some pussy first? Like, that's, that's funny, bro. Wait, are, are, okay, I'm so excited for this guy who's now referred to, like, trans 14-year-olds and said... Are you not going to try to get some pussy first? Is he now going to go on about how trans people are creeps who are groomers now? Is that what's going to happen? Are, are we going to have him go on now about how there's these, like, trans groomers? I'm really excited for him to do that. He has to do it. There's no way he doesn't do it. There's no way he doesn't touch on that right after that comment. It's too perfect. If I'm transphobic for that, fuck it. I guess I am. One thing you'll notice with my channel is I only talk about them when it involves kids let's go let's fucking go yes yes oh fuck dude i i don't think you understand i did not pre-watch this video i did not pre-watch this video i did not pre-watch this video 
I simply know, okay? These people have such a predictable construction of rhetoric and propaganda for their retarded positions that I can predict exactly what they're going to say. I can predict that they're going to make a creepy comment about that. That's, but it's, it's about straight sex in regards to, to young kids and then immediately call trans people creepy and try to do some groomer narrative shit. Fucking. <clears throat> and now I bet he's going to try to argue. Ah, yes. So when you comment this on the videos in which I'm covering trans groomers and this video is like our kids have no gender. How is this isn't pedophiles. Um, so you're defending this. So this is what you mean when you say trans. Interesting. Guarantee that's what he says next. Guarantee it. I'm going for two. I'm going for two for two now. Have you ever thought about that? I only talk about it when it involves it literal you. children. If you think that I'm bigoted towards topics about kids comes. being introduced to the trans stuff and having them confused at a young age, hell yeah, I'm bigoted towards that topic. What does that say about you? I there it is. There it fucking is. I, told, I, I can simulate these people's talking points in my own brain because at one point, I was one of the little retards these people try to propagandize to. I know exactly what this guy's audience wants to hear. Because I was that kind of guy once. I know exactly what he's going to say and how he's going to say it to try to turn his bigotry into this logic bro uh, thought process, despite the fact that science disagrees with all of it. And the thing is, when you can predict what your, uh, what your interlocutor is about to say, uh, then you can very easily, uh, you know, respond to what they're going to say. So, yeah. <laughs> like, the fact that I can literally predict what this guy is going to say because his talking points are so bog-standard, propagandistic, and stupid should really go to show how wrong this guy's positions are and how little or how much he's thought them out. He's a, he might be a good person if he's thought these positions out very little, and he's just talking out his ass. He might still at his core be a good person. But if he has thought about these things a lot, then he is dog whistling. He's either a victim of propaganda or somebody who understands the propaganda and is contributing to the, uh, the production of it. You're becoming a Life is Strange protagonist. This is your power. Yeah, I got that rewind. Actually, that's what I want to get down to. Why do you have a problem with me talking about kids being introduced to it? If you Hell don't yeah, now the whole video now the rest of the video is gonna be about how the people calling him transphobic and disagreeing with him are creepy pedophile defenders. That's the we've gone we've done the full circle. We've done the full circle. See the problem. Who the fuck do I have in my audience? Bro, who, unsub if you think that that's transphobic. And this is what they'll say. They'll be like Ah, but in middle school, we have the sex ed videos that show a penis and a vagina. They're exposing kids to it, too. Those videos show you the reproductive system of your own bodies. Wait, does this guy... Does this guy not realize... D does this guy not realize that the people who he takes the side of don't believe that there should be health classes in school? Like, one of the things they're banning, along with, like, mentions of being gay or trans, is sex ed like that's one of the things they're banning they consider that to be like part of the same issue they 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 consider that to be a problem now they say it's because any form of exposure to sexual content to children is bad but in reality it's the fact that scientific studies i not really scientific studies more it's more so just cr crime data analysis um has shown that sex education given at a younger age, like some form of it, heavily reduces the likelihood of a child being the victim of sexual exploitation. And if they are a victim, it massively increases the chances of their victimizer, the predator in, the, in this scenario, being caught. Because the child will know what's happened to them, that it's wrong, and that what they need to do, and that they should get help. Conservatives, knowing pedocon law, as we do, they fight against any form of sex education because it makes young kids less knowledgeable about sex and it makes them more prone to one of these two things. 
having young premarital sex, which will then lead to wedlocking, uh, you know, and, and having a baby. Uh, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go ahead and, and just have a baby. They'll get locked into a, a, mar- a marriage, and that's just how it goes, right? Conservatives love that. Like, teenage pregnancies le- leading to marriage, right? Or it will lead to a uh, easier target for them to victimize in a lot of scenarios. That is why they fight against sex ed. That's not an adult going, going to a child and saying... Hey, have you ever questioned who you're sexually attracted to? It's not the same at all. And if you're on the retard side of this argument, get the fuck out of here. As I said earlier, unsub. I like how he goes from like, I just have an opinion and people disagree with my opinion about trans people to everyone who disagrees with my opinion about trans people is a pedophile and needed to go to prison. I like how he couldn't even keep the fact that he's like very authoritarian with this position to the extent that he thinks people who disagree with him deserve prison. Like, he, he couldn't even keep that under wraps. Uh, hey, man, if I'm transphobic for anything I said in this video, I guess I am, dude. I, I'm gonna have to live the rest of my life being a transphobe. As I keep going on with I the channel, I'm gonna- I cannot wait to see how this guy responds to this video in a few years. Oh, my God. Continue to talk about things that I find interesting, and if it involves trans people taking it too far, I'm gonna talk about it, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> Let's see the, um, oh, nice, a Bible quote. Um, let's see the comments. You can't hate someone for being delusional, laughing, crying emoji. Finally, a YouTuber who is not brainwashed and scared to tell the truth. We need more people speaking out on their actual opinions, just like this without fear. I find it good for you, Poncho, to give your own opinion, especially in times that people are too scared to have their own opinion. I am trans, and I do agree. People are way too sensitive. My take on it is that you should respect other people's opinions, but you shouldn't let them force it on you, and vice versa. Treat people like people, first of all. You can't control what other people say. I don't think this person's trans. <laughs> the pinnacle of everything I hate is racist, bigoted, transphobic, homophobic, fascism, sexist, white supremacy, and every insult that means absolutely nothing because they're tossed on as insults means... No one uh, actually knows what these words mean, quote-unquote. So that's basically the idea that all these words mean nothing now. You're not transphobic. You think logically and speak genuinely. As someone who is trans, you are not transphobia at all. As someone who is trans, you are not transphobia at all. You just disagree and are very respectful about your disagreement, and that's respectable. Good on you, man. I love the PSYOP comments. The PSYOP comments pretending to be trans are my favorite. I'm transgender, and I can't pretend that being biologically female isn't part of me. I'm still a woman regardless of what I identify as. You're real, you're real valid for your opinion. Ah yes, a real trans person, I'm sure. Don't let them shame you. Shaming works on children, it's usually other children doing the shaming out of insecurities. As a trans person, the trans people who get mental breakdowns because they're misgendered piss me off too, Lamal. I look like a girl, so people call me she, her. I'm a he, him. I don't care because I look like it. I'm still female. You're entitled to your own opinion. You're not transphobic, and I absolutely love watching your videos because you're real. That one might be a real trans person. Probably one that's uh, a regular poster on TTTT, though. Yeah. A lot of overwhelming support in the comments, obviously. Like, transphobia is a massive market online right now. You're going to be met, like, on the internet with, like, massive support if you're transphobic, so it's just to be expected. Jalen, thank you for the $5. As someone who has went through this pipeline in 2016, it's crazy that they still have the same wrong talking points. Well, the fun thing is, Jalen, the fact that their talking points don't change means I don't have to, like, change my arguments. Like, I had to do, like, a bunch of research on this shit, like, back in 2019 and 2020, and since then, the same, like body of knowledge that I occasionally update with, like, new stuff uh, ha- has been completely viable for debunking all this shit. So it's, like, makes my job easier, you know? And it means that, you know, the Zoomers that are falling for this shit, they will be pulled out of it with the same arguments that worked on me, most likely. So, frankly, I can't really be that upset about it. But, yeah. Remember, though, this overwhelming, like, wave of transphobic talking points, it's only on the internet. Outside of the internet, and outside of, like, the transphobic sectors of the internet, transphobia is not popular. It's just not. It's losing elections. It's not even popular on an electoral level. Um, Even in red states, the Republicans are wasting millions on uh, anti-trans ads that are just objectively not winning them elections. Uh, It is a failing topic. Society, like, the, the conservatives started fighting against trans rights too late. That's the thing. 
The conservatives treated trans people like a joke for too long and didn't start fighting against them as like a serious like group of people they want to oppress and genocide until it was too late. There's too much broader trans acceptance socially at their starting point. Haven't you guys noticed that? Like, homosexuality was something that was, like, something you couldn't be way before it became, like, uh, 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 a, like a, a social thing that was being pushed for. There were trans people back in the 1920s, and it wasn't an issue. Like, trans people having issues in the way they do today is a more modern thing. Like, a lot of issues trans people face today are more modern. Like, the conservatives seeing, like, trans people as a symptom of, like, society progressing, and then being like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, and, like, slowly adapting to, uh, to see trans people as, like, another group they need to attack. And they've only really just recently jumped on it hardcore. And it's already too late, I think. Like, society was already on board with things like, you know, not misgendering trans people and, like, banning transphobes from massive social media platforms, you know, you know, pre Elon buying Twitter. Like, I think they just got on board with this like anti trans stuff way too late. Um, and I don't think it's going to age well, like in the short term. That's the funny thing is like, we are in the short term going to see how badly this rhetoric ages. And it's going to be an amazing show to watch. I, I genuinely think this. And if you guys know my predilection for predicting things, then believe me on this, because I've never been more sure of something. There is going to be a very satisfying to watch, to watch mass revelation of, of, like, particularly these Zoomers who are falling for this shit online, who are going to be flooding into lefty YouTube. Come probably the election. The election is probably going to be when it happens. Like, towards the end of this year and midway next year is when you're going to start to see a massive flood of people who were who are now conservatives falling out of conservatism and getting into lefty shit. And I think it's going to be an even bigger wave in the 2028 election. I think the 2024 election is going to be like big, but not that huge. Cause it's kind of, uh, I, I, in my gut, I feel like it's a layup for Biden. Like, I feel like Biden's got it in the bag. Things could go crazy, but I feel like Biden's got 2024 in the bag. 2028 is going to be so crazy and um, unpredictable that politics is going to be so big online that, yeah, I think you're going to see a wave of, like, people who are currently chuds becoming lefties and falling out of that stuff. Yeah, maybe I'll be the candidate in 2028. Let's not go that far, Zan. No, I legitimately do think so. Yeah, I think that the fact that a lot of Gen Z is already very, like, politically left-leaning is pretty relevant, but I think the ones who have fallen for the right-wing propaganda are going to have a pretty significant, like, turnover. Much like I did. I was the same. I was one of these people, just of an older, at, like, part of Gen Z. Like, Gen Z is in, like, kind of four... I consider Gen Z to exist in, like, four-year segments, right? Like, you've got your Gen Zers, who are currently adults, pretty much. Like, your 24 to 20-year-olds, and the, uh, like, 19-year-olds. And then you've got, like, your Gen Zers, who are high schoolers. And then you've got your Gen Zers, who are middle schoolers. And then you've got your Gen Zers, who are elementary schoolers. Who are, like, the, you know, the, the, like, the elementary schoolers and the middle schoolers are, like, the, the, the stereotypical Gen Z. But obviously, you always see Gen Z referred to, like, high schoolers and, like, young 20s nowadays a lot. So, yeah, that generation is extremely progressive. And when we, like, talk about politics in that regard, we're talking about the older Gen Z because that's when you get into politics is, like, when you're a bit older. Um, and they can't even vote yet. A lot of them can't. And they're extremely progressive. Like, insanely progressive. And the ones of them that aren't are the ones online being radicalized to the far right. And a lot of them are not going to be like that forever. A lot of them aren't. I think Gen Z might be the generation that kills the Republican Party. I think that when the kids who are currently in elementary school hit voting age, long time away from now, I think the Republican Party as we know it today will not exist. Effectively. 
It'll have to change itself a lot if it wants to continue existing. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe millennials, as they get older and they become boomer age, maybe their money and their retirement and their golfing and their lack of working or having to experience uh, uh, the working class life, maybe that pushes them to a more conservative uh, position. Maybe a lot of them, you know, because it benefits the more end up voting Republican. Could end up happening. I could be wrong. It could balance out just because the millennials and Gen X end up, you know, just kind of switching over more as they get older and accumulate more wealth. No, there will be a, a fair amount of millennials being able to retire. Not as many as would like, but some. I don't know. Millennials aren't wealthy in the same way boomers are. Um, yeah, but it, it, okay. It's hard to say. How many millennials are are putting money into their um into their 401k and uh and their other retirement funds? That's what's important. That's what you have to I'm not talking about in chat. I'm talking about statistically. That's what's important. Millennials don't have money. That's true. Millennials are broke as fuck. But it does not take a lot of money to put it, put like 20 bucks a week in retirement funds throughout like your 20s and 30s and 40s. A fair amount of millennials don't have money now, but are investing in retirement and will be able to take that money out when they hit retirement age and their politics will likely change with their monetary situation when they hit retirement age. I'm investing in my retirement funds. It's not that expensive. There are some pretty like high interest rate well appreciating it like uh, retirement funds you can put like a very relatively small amount of money in like every other week and by the time you are in your 50s you're going to be able to pull out hundreds of thousands of like 800k for retirement that's a thing if you start like at, 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 at like when i am like in, in your early 20s you start investing in, in your retirement funds and it's not a lot of money it's not a lot it really isn't that much um uh, uh, th then you you can you can pull like nearly a million dollars out when you're ready to retire. Like you can. I seriously recommend you look into it. Like look into uh, retirement fund investing. And, and and if you're in your early twenties and you're working like a minimum wage job and you're living with your parents, holy f look into it. Start now, make the habit now, and you'll be happy you did when you're in your fifties, and you don't have to work a wagey cagey job. You'll be happy. Trust me. It's good advice. I don't know why I devolved into like a uh, financial advice stunlock into the end of this segment. Sorry for the stunlock. <laughs>